So five NBA games were decided in the final minute last night. Steph Curry dropped 37 against a very good Pelicans team. And we got a bunch of excellent Halloween costumes, including DeAndre Ayton scaring the crap out of anyone who saw him. <laughs> and also, Iman Shepard's daughter dressed as a loofah, which was amazing. Um, still, the story of the night was clearly Derrick Rose, who was flat out eye popping in a vintage performance against the Jazz. It's not just that Rose scored 50 points or that those 50 were a career high. It's the way that he played that was just so show-stopping. You can see him just barreling his way toward the hoop, right? Man, or, this was so good Look at this crossover, Chance. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen that too many times. Right? On the other side, <laughs> this you. one, he got the rebound, a little behind the back, a spin move between the legs, the perfect assist. Look at the low angle. Man, this, this is, I was so, so proud of Derek last night. Right? So you see all of this. And, and he jacked up 31 shots. I can see Stan sort of standing up at that one. But a lot of them did result in big buckets, like this one. This was a corner three coming down the stretch. His shot looks better to me than it's ever looked. He's got more arc on the ball. Looks fantastic. Absolutely. And look at this. This is the end of the game when it mattered most. Here is what he did to the reigning defensive player of the year. And then on the other end, blocking Dante Exum's potential game tying three in the final second. And afterward, Derek was super emotional. He was just doubled over in tears on the court. When he got into the locker room, his teammates <laughs> went just nuts. That's awesome. And social media lighting up like a Christmas tree, too. LeBron James writing a lengthy and heartfelt IG post. Really, nearly every player who has ever played with Rose gave him a shout out. Plenty of guys who haven't, too. But then, well, then there also seemed to be a scramble to put Rose's game into perspective, to make it a metaphor and a larger narrative. And that is where the evening and what we've seen extend through today that's where it gets tricky. Let's talk about the team stuff first. I saw plenty of people try to wrap this as the grand healing moment in the Wolves' fractured season. And, and well, look, I absolutely believe great games can do a lot to bring a locker room together. Derrick Rose dropping 50 in one night, it's not going to magically fix the obvious tug of war going on over Jimmy Butler wanting to be traded and all the bad feelings that is continuing to evoke. Number two. There was the massive redemption narrative that everybody hurried into about how much Derek had overcome and persevered through, which is both absolutely true and completely false, depending on what you're talking about. Absolutely, Derek Rose has overcome a horrific and in many cases heartbreaking series of injuries that robbed the league's youngest ever MVP of one of the great what might have been careers. Twice he's had to take time away from the game on teams he's been on, unsure of if he even wanted to continue playing. And twice he came back. And if you have been around to witness the incredible physical and mental toll all of that has taken, the fact that he's still standing, much less doing what he did on that court last night, that is incredible. However, there is also the absolute fact that two years ago, Rose was accused of participating in a gang rape. A civil trial found him not liable, but a lot of Rose's own testimony was troubling. And regardless of how you personally judge what happened there, watching people last night bring that trial up and then try to gloss over it as something Rose went through as adversity for him, that was cringe-inducing to say the least. Personally, I think it is okay to get excited about what Derrick Rose did on that basketball court last night. And I also think it's okay to talk in real terms about what he's done off of it, both the good and the bad. Derrick Rose, he was the story last night, and it is all part of his story. And by the way, his story, it's not over. He's not the same kid who won the MVP in 2011. He's also not the same man who sat in that courtroom in 2016. We all get to continue on and try to evolve and move forward. And that is an okay thing, too.